Uh, anything, the future for TikTok before we get off that subject? I don't really think there is a future in TikTok. I think it's done. I think really? It's, yeah, I think it's cooked. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cooked in seven months' time. And I think, I think it's a good thing because I think it's destroyed people's attention span. I think it's, it's made people very, like, geared towards the brain rot, you know? I mean, we look at the stuff that trends the most on TikTok, and it is the stupidest stuff. Yeah, yeah. it is. The stupider the video, the better it does. <laughs> <laughs> Literally though, that's yeah. how it is on TikTok. So, what do you think about like the, your thoughts on the ban from TikTok? You know how they're trying to pass that. Yeah, ban it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Go Hard Podcast, guys. Thank you for tuning in. We got an amazing guest today. You know, you seen him on TikTok, seen him on YouTube, and you seen him, you know, building his cars up. You seen the Mustang, the Camaro. Let's welcome Toby to the podcast, man. Can we get some live audience in the background, <laughs> man? <laughs> Toby, so, man, uh, tell us a bit. Tell us a little bit about you, man. So I've been uh, creating social media content for about 13 years now. I started when I was like, I don't even know. Well, that wouldn't even make any sense. I'm not 26. I'm 22. But yeah, a while ago, um, started in middle school, actually. I was making like gaming videos back then and then kind of transitioned into the fitness scene. Uh, started growing a following for fitness and then I started doing cars all while I was in college. So I think I transitioned from fitness stuff to cars when I was in college. What made you get into cars, though? Maybe, like, a car you've seen, maybe a um, an influencer, you know, or maybe just a car on the road or... Honestly, I've always been into cars. I just, like, didn't have any passion to make videos for them until when I was around, around like, 17, 18. But my first car was my mom's CLA 250. It was a 2014. And I did a downpipe, intercooler, everything on that. It was actually the first Rentec tuned CLA 250 out there. So I was their test and development car. Uh, they tuned it for free, which was pretty cool. It <laughs> made like 250 wheel. It was slow, but like I was always into cars. Since I was 16, I plasti dipped that car. Kind of cringe, but <laughs> yeah. So do you think you started off like ricer? Oh yeah. Type? Oh yeah, for sure. Damn. I, I definitely come from a ricer background. I was the guy with the the fake blue tips on the exhaust and everything uh, definitely came from the ricer background. Do you background. think you're still kind of ricer uh, <laughs> I like the cosmetic mods, but I still like to make power. We're not making crazy power like other guys out there, but uh, still making good power. Uh, uh. What about, like, um, what's ricer to you now? I don't know. Like, a lot of people misinterpret that term, I feel like. You know, they, they say rice to, like, carbon fiber car parts and that type of stuff, but... In my book, it's like a race-inspired cosmetic enhancement. I mean, like, if you're putting carbon fiber on your car, it's not race-inspired. You're getting weight reduction out of it. It's actually beneficial and that type of stuff. And I think a lot of people mix that term up. Like, you'll put a spoiler on your car. Oh, it's rice, you know? I think there's a difference between rice and distasteful. Mm. And I think a lot of people, like, mix those two things up. Yeah. that's That makes sense. But I think... The rice would be like the fake carbon fiber. Yeah, that's because true. Because carbon fiber is fucking expensive. Yeah. I mean, you get carbon fiber doors, they're fucking high. Yeah, that's you what know? I was referring to. So I have people that tell me, oh, your car is a ricer because it's got carbon fiber fenders, hood, trunk, you know, but it's all real carbon. So I don't yeah. really understand it. You know, I'm getting the weight reduction benefit out of it. It's yeah. not just for looks. So, yeah. What do you save on, on the weight wise? With doors. all the carbon? Yeah. Uh, well, I know the trunk is 20 pounds lighter. Like, I did a visual whole, like, showing the weight difference. I put it on the scale and everything back then when I put that on. I mean, I've got a carbon carbon fiber drive shaft, too. That shaves a good amount of weight as well. Um, the hood, probably around 15 pounds. It's not a big difference. The fenders, I don't even think that makes a difference because you have some pretty light, thin fenders from the factory on these Mustangs. Yeah, so. yeah. And plus, I think the carbon fiber is stronger, right, on the dry shaft? Uh, it depends. Or I mean, a, there's yeah. a lot of controversial opinions about it. A lot of people go with the one-piece aluminum drive shafts. They think those are better for launching. I've seen people actually tear the carbon fiber drive shafts off a dig. It all depends. I mean, 
I don't know. It's just a controversial take. I went with it because I found a good deal. You know, mm. used 700 bucks for a full carbon fiber drive shaft. That's what you usually pay for like a aluminum drive shaft. And I was just like, oh, I'll pick it up. So that's yeah. why I got it. It didn't go with carbon for any specific reason. Yeah. Yeah. You can't go wrong with those Facebook um, buys, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My car is sponsored by Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> yeah. I find some good parts on there. Um, I've had my fair share of bad experiences on Facebook. You know, I got scammed out of a couple superchargers, but... Really? Yeah. How I was mean, that like? Uh, so, basically, I bought a Gen 4 Whipple supercharger for my Camaro, and I really wanted to boost the car. So, I see this Facebook ad. It's like four grand for the kit. I go and pick it up, and um, I install it. And I kid you not, like, I spent five to six hours installing it. And first start, the Whipple is rattling. So, oh. the housing is shot. The, uh, the rotors are making contact with each other. It was a bad noise. It was like a... And I didn't know what was wrong with it at how the time. It? How, how was it? It was done. It was done for. Yeah. So I sent it straight back to Whipple Superchargers, and they um, they basically said to me, we discontinued the Gen 4 Whipple for the Camaros. We are done with that because we have so many. Uh, I think it was like a failure of the bearings inside the snout. So they told me they're completely done with it. Um, housing is shot. Rotors are done. And we can upgrade you to the Gen 5 Whipple for four grand. So what ended up happening was because since I bought it on PayPal, which I always recommend you guys do, goods and services, there's a fee, but since I bought it on PayPal, I opened a dispute with the seller. Seller doesn't even respond to the dispute. I got my four grand back. I upgraded to the Gen 5 Whipple for four grand. You know, that's a $10,000 supercharger. I got it for four grand. Damn. So I kind of made out in the end, you know, it that was a bad situation. I waited three and a half months to get the supercharger back. I think most, uh, like on, when I pay through PayPal, it's also with goods and services. I think it's like business, though. Yeah, you yeah, can do yeah. the business thing. Yeah. I highly recommend doing that. That's the way to do it because you're always going to cover yourself in that situation. I don't buy any car part now through Zelle. Nothing. Especially if it's anything over 500 bucks, never through Zelle. I'm not going to lie. That's some uh, plug talk, for real. Yeah. Like, so, that's some knowledge for us. Yeah, always PayPal goods and service it. If somebody has an issue with paying on PayPal goods and service, you probably shouldn't be buying from them. That's yeah. what I tell people. Damn. So, yeah. Hmm. Toby dropping the knowledge early, yeah. honestly. Fucking <laughs> 8:30 in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's cool, man, honestly. Um We're going to get into Sally and Sully later. Mm -hmm. Um tell us your your path in TikTok, like uh, from you starting out, you know, how did you start out? You know, obviously you start off with one follower, right? And you yeah. start 5, 10. Now you're at, I think, 700. 730 something. something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the specific. Yeah. I didn't look. But uh, basically, I always told everyone that I was going to be like a YouTuber and that type of stuff when I was in high school. And I think I started making TikTok videos with uh, gaming content. So, like I said, like I always had a background in gaming stuff. And I gained some followers from that. But then I started doing fitness because I've been lifting for like four years now. Um, I was showing people like diet advice, uh, my routines, that type of stuff. And I gained 50,000 followers from that. So that happened in the span, I think, of like six to seven months. I went from like zero to 50K. Um, and then from there, I got the green Mustang. So then What I, year was that? Uh, 2020. Okay. Yeah. So I was- During nine, COVID? Yeah. During Damn. COVID, yeah. But it was like, it was kind of crazy. I got an interest, a really good interest rate on that car. I think it was like four or 5%. So it was like decent, you know, for COVID times. And, uh, but the car MSRP was high, you know? Really? Like, yeah, it's a Gen 3 401A. So it's a high package, but I think out the door with tax and everything, it was like 51 grand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then keep, if you can keep going on with TikTok. Oh, yeah. So with the TikTok stuff, um, basically, I was making the fitness videos. I had gained traction through that. And then I had randomly posted a picture or video of the Mustang. And everyone loved it because of the grabber lime color. So I was like, oh, we need to spice things up a little more. I don't know if you remember this or not, but I put those circle taillights on the Mustang. They were like halo circle taillights. Oh, okay, okay. oh man, people did not like that. <laughs> So from there, I think I got a lot of bad engagement, but at the same time that benefited me and it kind of shot me towards like 100K. 
at the mm. same time. So a lot of people were talking a big mess about the circle taillights and a Corvette gave, Mustang. It, yeah. The <laughs> They're like, it's not a Ferrari. You put Ferrari taillights on there. And that really gave the page a lot of traction out of yeah. that. So that's kind of how it start. I started getting the ball rolling. And then I ended up making posts about, oh, I'd like to supercharge the car. People were interested in that. And I think I hit around 200,000. So at that point, I had supercharged a car. And I don't know if you remember this or not, but four months later, after I hit 200K, I crashed the car. Do you, rem Damn, do you remember seeing no. that? I, I started following you when you hit like 500K. Yeah, so this like was... Like you were like already up there. Up there, yeah. yeah. So this was... Literally, I would say three to four months after I put the supercharger on. Oh, man. We were driving in Orlando, actually. It was 4th of July weekend. I'll never forget this. July 3rd. I was coming off a highway on-ramp. I was merging onto the main highway, and I hydroplaned. Fuck. Yeah. Did a full 180, right? Full 180, slide backwards into the ditch, and I hit, like, 15 trees at least going backwards. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, my Probably friend was like one tree, and then he's no, <laughs> fifteen trees. I swear. How big were the trees? I mean, they're not. They weren't yeah, yeah, big yeah. ones, but the last one I hit was pretty big. That yeah. took out the entire rear end of the car. Like bent the quarter panel pretty bad. Took out the rear bumper. I mean, the car had nineteen thousand dollars in damage, and this was a COVID market. So the fact that the the only reason why it didn't get totaled out was because the market was so high for cars. The MSRP was high. The trade-in value on the car was high. Yeah. So that saved the car. It was a grand off of being totaled. Damn. And then I, I really gained a lot of traction off of that because someone decided to take that and make a mocking post out of it. So Who was that? Uh, Hosan. Oh. Yeah. So he made a video about that. I think he said something about, this is why I don't mess with you broke boys. And he put like six pictures of the Mustang in the bushes, totaled, and me <laughs> sitting there looking at the car like traumatized. Yeah, You know, because that was like my first major accident. I would say I'd, I haven't had like a bad accident like that ever. Yeah, And it was just like eye-opening how bad things can go wrong in like in the matter of like a second. Yeah, damn. Yeah. So... Yeah. Then he made that video. I made a response video to that and the page took off. Like yeah. really, really took off. I think I had hit like I went I went up another 150k within two months. Is that why you respond to like every No nah, every beef now? So like people that like to talk, I don't know. I respond I like to respond to people in the comments in the first place because if you take your time out of your day to comment on my page, I feel like it's it's a something that I need to do is like respond to the engagement and that type of stuff and keep it going and i don't know there's a lot of negativity i used to I like was, i was gonna say yeah. you respond to a lot of negativity yeah though. more than positive yeah that is true <laughs> back then i would say that it's especially true but as of now like people will say stuff and i've just learned to ignore it i don't know i feel like that's like a personal growth type of thing yeah. where you just like you get so caught up in the moment of like responding to the negativity that like it, you realize that it's not even worth it. People are saying stuff for your reaction. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's just like for clout and stuff. Yeah, yeah. They want the they want the likes and the comment section and that type of stuff. So they're gonna yeah. say some stuff and they're gonna see if you can get your reaction. And then I I didn't even realize this until recently, but like they show the comments the most to the one the creator responds to. So if the a creator responds to the comment, it goes, it's top of the feed. Yeah, yeah. So that's why it's like an endless cycle. You give people attention that are commenting negativity, they're only going to do it more. Yeah, yeah, right. because you're feeding it yeah. and you're putting it at the top. So yeah. I just, I don't know. It's like a personal growth type of thing. Like I matured out of doing that. But like at the end of the day, you don't have anything to prove to anybody. So yeah. that's what I tell people like, oh, how do you deal with that all the time? I don't really care, you know. It's just it's just a part it's a part of doing this. People are always going to have something to say. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't you don't respond anymore? No, not really. You're full of shit, nah. Toby. You think so? Yeah, I think you do, man. I think I think you stay respond cuz you responded to fucking uh, one Ali Ja. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about that. I did respond to him about that because I do want to race him. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to organize something. He said he got he has to get the the C7 Z06 out. I mean, I can tell you the whole lore behind that. That yeah. was crazy. So I am friends with Jordan. I've known Jordan for a while. Uh, Chino SS, yeah. you're familiar with him, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I've known Jordan for a while. 
And I thought that Jaws car was boosted. I knew that he had the 416 set up and I didn't really understand that his car wasn't boosted. So I asked a question under Jordan's post. I said, what's the point of running a 416 with no boost? Genuine question to Jordan, not on Jaws post, but then Jaw took it and ran with it, yeah. posted about it, called me out, all this stuff. And I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> and I was like, I may as well let this one rip back at him because yeah. I... Let's go. Let's yeah. race. You know, I don't care. Yeah. A lot of people talk and they never show out in the end. Yeah. You know, what was your, um, your, your thought behind the 416? Because I mean, you can have a 416 built for nitrous high compression mm -hmm. and you can have a 416 built low boost for boost. Right. Well, you, I mean, you know that I'm not a Chevy guy, so yeah. I, my knowledge is limited on Chevy and that type of stuff, but I'm really only familiar with the L21 platform and boost. So the only thing that I'm really paying attention to is the 416 stroker with a supercharger kit or something like that. You know, mm. that's what I'm familiar with. A very, um, I guess, stock compression, or I don't really know about the 416s that much, but yeah. I know my car, like my Camaro is stock compression. It's just a rod and piston build with boost. And I see a lot of people are like, oh, the 416 stroker for boost is the way to go with an LT1. Oh, so, so you really didn't know they had like high compression? No, I'm not familiar with mm. LT, LS, like yeah. that. You know, I'm not very honed in on that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of ignorant with that. I know more about Coyote just because I've been dealing with it for longer and I have no clue about LS. That's Damn. what I know the least about. But the yeah. only thing I know about is somebody asked me, what's a good setup to make 800, 900 wheel with a LT1? I can tell you with boost, but yeah. NA, I'm not very familiar with that, you know, that type of stuff. Yeah. So your your question was more about um, just to know. Yeah, just to know. Yeah. I just didn't understand. And I guess I could have worded it better. Yeah. I, you think, know? I think it was the wording. Yeah. This is somebody's own perspective, what, how they're reading the question and taking it in. You know? I knew that I could understand why he took it the wrong way, like straight off the rip, because a lot of people were talking shit in that comment section about his car. Oh, that 416 is a dud this and that, that thing is slow. I got walked by a stock GT350, right? So I guess out of context, the way I worded it was not good whatsoever. And it went along with a lot of, I guess he perceived it as me hopping on the wave of talking shit in his comment section. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. a lot of people were talking shit there. So I guess everything gets taken out of context and it has a different meaning, but definitely could have worded it better on yeah. my end. I yeah. think I think a lot of people too when they when they hear stroker they think of more power, but usually like LS LT guys they go stroker is to hold the power. Like you're not gonna make a big amount of power just doing that. You're gonna hold a fuck ton of power, you know, forged rods, forged pistons, forged crank, billet crank, whatever the fuck you want to. So put, pretty you know? much it's bulletproofing and it's not increasing. I wouldn't uh, say bulletproof because you can still break that motherfucker. Well, yeah, but like making it less likely right, to grenade. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like his 416, whoever built it, I'm not sure who built it, it would it, it would hold a good amount of power depending, you know, what rods, what pistons. I guess uh, people associate with stroking like as in increasing displacement. So they do that correlation of, oh, You I'm do increase displacement, but you just don't increase the HP that significantly like much more. Is that, you know, I guess that you. makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Like I said, I don't really know much about NA builds and yeah, stuff no, like yeah, that. Yeah. I'm a force induction. I'm not, guy. I don't know everything either. You know, we're all just learning, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we're not like experts, honestly, you know. Yeah, exactly. What, what, do, you, what do you think about when they when they call you um like the TikTok mechanic or the TikTok automotive guy? So I don't really take offense to it because I'm not a mechanic. I wasn't raised in a family that does that type of stuff. They're all white collar workers. You know, my mom's a doctor. My stepdad owns restaurants. My real dad, who I haven't spoke to in a while, but he is also a doctor. And my mother's dad is a doctor. My father's dad was a doctor. So we come from a family of doctors. And it's just like, why would I take offense to somebody calling me a TikTok mechanic? Because at the end of the day, I'm not a mechanic. I just do it. I just want to figure things out on my own and I want to know how to fix things. The last thing I want to do is be dependent on a shop to, you know, have any sort of work done. And at the end of the day, it's just like, 
useful for me to be like, oh, I have this problem. I can diagnose it myself and fix it. Or I bought this supercharger. I want to throw it on. I can do it. Or I need a new trans. It's not like a big whoop-de-doo boo-hoo because it's a lot of cost that I'm subtracting by doing it myself. Yeah. You know, these shop uh, hourly wages and stuff like they're chart, they're taxing. So it's definitely useful to know how to do it for yourself. And I want to yeah. learn. Not only that, though, you can work on your car whenever you want. Exactly. Yeah. So like the shops open, let's say nine to five. Yep. Or they're closed on the weekends. You can change your motor. That's over my the biggest pet peeve too. Yeah. Is like, okay, I'm going to take my car to a shop, right? Well, they're only working set hours. They've got 50 other cars there. And if I want something done fast, it's not realistically going to happen. It's not on my time schedule. But I like to know that if I want something done right now, I can do it myself. I'm going to do it right now, you know? Yeah. And not I, only that, you can document the car. Exactly. Everything. It's, it's a part of my content it's creation. A bank, yeah. yeah. Like how many of my videos of mine are just like me installing stuff? A, bi- a good portion, you know, and then... I just look at it as a learning process. Yes, I show my mistakes because they're helpful. If somebody feels too intimidated to do something for the first time, they can look at my video and say, hey, he made this mistake, so I know not to make that mistake when I do it. That's why I show it. You know, I can pretend that I don't make mistakes. It's very easy to do that. I can cut to the final result, show everything 100%. Yeah, you control the narrative. Yeah, I control the narrative. You know, I can... I can be imperfect, but I want to show the full process behind it to show people what it's like to learn. It's not to like be the gatekeeper, be the one who knows everything, you know? Yeah. Yeah, That's not what my page is about. I think the real question is, why didn't you become a doctor? Why didn't I become a doctor? I don't know. I went to UF. Because I mean, you said you came from a family of doctors, right? So I went to UF on academic scholarship. I graduated top 10% of my class in high school and um, I just... I don't know. I'm smart. I can never had issue with classes. I soared through all of that. I just didn't have a passion in that. I had a passion for creating videos. That's what I always was interested in. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. I mean, you know. Yeah, it's always a good backup, though. If I ever needed to resort back to what I have, I always have my degree and stuff, and I can go pursue higher education, too. Yeah. So, yeah. What do you think? So, since we're on TikTok and talking about that, what do you think about? how TikTok's changed as far as uh, RPM wise? Well, honestly, it got really bad at one point for me. Like my had, my RPM had dropped from a dollar 10 cents to like 60 cents. And I, I was losing a lot of money on TikTok, but as of the past two months, it went right back on up. I don't hmm. know what's up with that. I don't think that's like uh, consistent with everyone else who's posting out there because I still see people complaining about it. But I don't know. And they used to cut me off too. Like a certain amount of videos I posted a month, like then they would be done. No more pay. Like it would go to zero. They say no more Toby. Yeah. (laughs) And I I think uh, Parker was talking to me about that. Like we had discussions. He had contacted somebody who was like a big content content creator, like millions plus. And the guy was making like 20, 30 grand a month on TikTok. This big guy who had millions and his RPM dropped really hard. He went to making a third of that. Damn. Yeah, and we all felt it too, like Parker, me. He, we were complaining because it definitely was there, but all of a sudden it shoots back up. I don't really get it. It's That's the thing with social media. It's never consistent. You know, That's why I always want to put as much effort as I do into TikTok as all my other platforms. Which is? YouTube. Facebook. Yeah. Facebook's a big one that people don't really know they about. They sleep on Facebook. They, f- they sleep on that. Bro, they pay me to post pictures yeah, on damn. Facebook. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Yeah. Like, people sleep on it. You got to get the Snapchat going. I mean, there's so many things that... You think people sleep on Snapchat? Oh, yeah. For sure. They don't even know the, the rules of monetization. Yeah, nowadays. I don't even know. Yeah. Damn. And it's real simple because I'm not going to gatekeep it. I'll tell you right now. You have to make 20 public story posts a day to make... Money a lot. on Snapchat Spotlight. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. That's a lot, though. For real. Yeah. You always got to be posting something, all that type of stuff. I mean, I've been I've been around doing this for a while. I've been running laps doing this for a, a while, so I know the, the rules and that type of stuff, where you can make money and that type of stuff. Instagram. They just started, right, with yeah, the Yeah, they cut us off, like, real bad about two years ago, and now they started doing bonus programs again. So 
it's it's inconsistent on Instagram, but I think a lot of people f- they like fell off from when they start when they cut Instagram. Oh yeah, hey, like people just stopped. Yeah, they stopped posting. They yeah. lost the motivation to keep posting. But I never saw Instagram as like a main source of income or like a vital source of income. I used it as a tool to promote the other platforms, and yeah. that's that's the important thing that people don't get. Like, okay, you might not make the most money off of this at this time, but you can use it to gain exposure here and people will see your, the more your name is brought up around on any platform, the better it is. It's beneficial. Yeah. yeah. What do you think is the the highest paid platform right now? Oh, YouTube by far. It's always been YouTube. YouTube is definitely the way to go. Like if it is the most difficult, I've been posting, like I told you, YouTube videos for a very long time now. Started with gaming. I transitioned to the car stuff. I started my car channel in 2021 and uh what it's 2024 now where are you at right now Ninety thousand. yeah in three ish years okay um i upload four times a week on youtube like at, full full videos oh yeah full videos do you do shorts uh yeah i use shorts okay definitely use shorts so i i went to sema and i met a lot of people there who do social media full-time who have big youtube followings and it's controversial about the whole shorts thing a lot of people say don't post shorts because it destroys your like viewership for the longer videos. But I don't think that's true because all these guys that are really making it big on YouTube for car content are implementing shorts. Yeah. So according to like, just going based off of analytics, Mm -hmm. like shorts is where it's at. Oh yeah. Like those bring the subscribers. Yeah. They bring the subscribers. They bring the views. Yeah. It's definitely worth it. And, um, you can even tag your videos. I'm sure you know, like yeah. your longer videos, it helps. Yeah. I've seen my videos shoot up by 3,000 views overnight yeah. because I tagged it on a short that went viral. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. What's the the highest uh, viral uh, short you got on YouTube? On YouTube? I think like 20 million. Damn. Yeah. Um, my longer videos, I think the most I've done is like 100K. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the shorts definitely is a game changer. That's... I, so I, the way I like to see it is like the shorts bring in the subs and then when they sub the long, the long, longer video comes out and then they watch it and boom, you know, like, yeah, it, it definitely helps. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that, um, use it in a, a good constructive way in order to bring the audience back because they'll say, Oh, if you want to see the rest of it, check out my longer video, you know? So it definitely yeah. helps. Yeah. I've seen it make a lot of people's channels big Yeah. real quick. Yeah. Yeah. I think on um, YouTube, oh, fuck, I think we're like a year and a half. You guys got like 80K, right? Yeah, a little yeah. bit over, yeah. That's pretty good, yeah. And you got good, I was like looking on your thing before, yeah. just like trying to get a feel for the podcast stuff. You guys got good in, like good views and good engagement, yeah? Yeah, it, I think that also depends on guests. Yeah. yeah, yeah, bigger names, brings yeah. a lot of attention, yeah, controversy, that type yeah. of stuff, yeah. yeah. Uh, anything, the future for TikTok before we get off that subject? I don't really think there is a future in TikTok. I think it's done. I think it's, really. Yeah, I think it's cooked. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's cooked in seven months' time, and I think I think it's a good thing because I think it's destroyed people's attention span. I think it's it's made people very like geared towards the brain rot. You know, I mean, we look at the stuff that trends the most on TikTok, and it is the stupidest stuff. Yeah, yeah. it is. The stupider the video, the better it does. <laughs> <laughs> literally though that's yeah. how it is on tiktok so what do you think about like the, your thoughts on the ban from tiktok you know how they're trying to pass that yeah oh. ban it <laughs> <laughs> i don't care yeah <laughs> at the end of the day i really i think it would be a good thing really? think, but that's your highest that's you have the most followers on there though yeah but like, i i don't know i just don't i don't really like it that much honestly the way that they it's very rigged okay so for example um any sort of like keyword I'll use, like, I don't know if you've been watching my videos and stuff, yeah. but I have to censor out a lot of words because they'll like to shadow ban me all of a sudden. You know, I have a, usually I'll have a video do like one to 2000 views in the first 10 minutes that I post it. Well, I'll make a video mentioning something about my mile an hour or my speed yeah. or something like that. And the video will get like 200 views in an hour. You know, they, you can definitely tell that they're moderating it and, I actually know somebody who works at TikTok and he's like, yeah, there's a tag system. So if somebody who's manually reviewing your videos feels that you are violating the TikTok terms of the For You page, 
they can tag your videos out of the for you page. Bam, bam, bam. Damn. Yeah. It's definitely a real thing. He showed me the whole process, but yeah. He That's no longer crazy. works with them. Did he work in Austin? I have no clue. Oh. Yeah. I don't I don't know any specifics. He just sent me videos about how the whole thing works. He showed me on his computer. It's a real thing. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy to yeah. know. So you have to be careful with what you post. I think they TikTok. use a lot of AI too, though. Yeah, it's a lot of AI, it's which falsely flags stuff too, yeah. which is annoying, yeah. you know? But there is people manually reviewing videos too. And if somebody doesn't like you in moderation, they can tag you, tag you, tag you. They can keep tagging you. Yeah. I used to have this guy go remove my tags when I knew I was shadow banned. Damn. Yeah. So you you manage your whole your all your platforms. Oh yeah, I don't have any anybody doing that. Yeah, I do yeah. that all myself. It's kind of sus too, to be honest. Yeah, like you can't trust people like that. I feel yeah. like yeah. yeah, I'll be like, damn, this dude's seven hundred. Let me steal his account or something, right? Yeah. <laughs> what is your um? Where are you native to, Toby? I know uh, this was off subject, but I'm Hispanic and Armenian. Really? Yeah. We're yeah. brothers. Look. Yeah. No, nah, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm Hispanic. I'm half Nicaraguan and I'm half Armenian. Damn, that's badass. Yeah. We were driving up here and we're like, man, he's probably like European or some shit, right? Babe? Nah. <laughs> yeah, I, we really didn't even know. That's cool, man. Honestly. Yeah. A lot of people think I'm white, but I just look I just look it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Damn. Do you do you go to like to your um your roots sometimes? Like Yeah, I mean I still I used to speak Spanish fluently, but I haven't spoken it in a while. Um I still understand it fully, but I mean, Armenian side of things. Not can really. I hear you speak Spanish right now? I mean, I can understand you. I can't speak it that well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak what? it that well. Because this is TV. I know. <laughs> Bro, I'm going to tell you something. Let me just say something, right? To, to those watching, I can't speak Spanish like 100%. I can understand it and someone read it. And I can't fucking speak English for shit. I just can't <laughs> speak nothing. I swear to God. <laughs> it's all over the place with me, man. Honestly, I can't speak English right. I can't speak Spanish right. I, fuck. I'm, I'm fucked, you know? <laughs> like, just... They're going to roast me, but fuck it. It's just as simple as that. You Where know? are you from? I'm from Houston. Yeah, but... Born like, and raised. Originally. You're Hispanic, right? Yeah, but... Yeah. I'm born. Yeah, but where though? My, my parents. Yeah. So like my my mom, she's from San Luis. Okay. That was white as fuck. She's from San Luis, right? And then my uh, my dad is uh, he was in the states. So you're you're not a first generation American. Second generation. Second generation. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm a first. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. My parents came here when they were uh, 19 and 20. Okay. Yeah. Damn. So they were already adults. They yeah, came. they were adults. So my uh, my dad was in medical school and down there in Nicaragua, and then he graduated and went to residency at Yale when he was like, I don't know, something like that, some story like that. I mean, the ages don't match up, but something like that. He went, no, he went, he finished medical school in the states. Um, and and this your real dad or stepdad? My real dad. Okay. And okay. then my mom came to. Uh, the States when she was 19 to go to the University of Miami and then she pursued the medical degree from the University of Miami after undergrad and all that type of stuff. Mm. Yeah. Damn. So did, so you can't speak no Spanish whatsoever? No, I, I can speak Spanish a little bit, but not like fluently, fluently. Yeah, like you can order food yeah. pretty much. Oh. I so mean, people like when I speak Spanish to native speakers, they can tell I have like a weird accent. Can you can you give us something like just say I want to order? I'll say yo puedo hablar español. You see, okay. I have a weird accent <laughs> yeah. because I haven't been speaking it like yeah. that much. But in high school, I took like four years of French, so it really messed it up too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you English, French, and fucking Spanish. Yeah. Is... Je, let me let me think. Hold up. Je puis parler français. You see, it like messes up everything. Yeah. I have like these different accents and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. That's cool. Sally. Yeah. The Green Mustang. What is, when you first got it, right? You you're, you said your first mod was the round tail lights. That's what blew you up. Oh, right? yeah. What is, talk about the build from. Start to finish? Start to finish, yeah. So, it's actually like pretty simple build. I mean, 
you know how these coyotes are. Yeah. Oil pump gears, crankshaft, sprocket, fuel system, boost, power adder, and a clutch. I mean, I had an MT-82 for four years, stock MT-82. I never blew it up. So, you know, that, that uh, transmission gets a lot of flack on the internet, but you can watch my videos. For four years, I was street racing it, roll racing, anything. I mean, yeah. not many digs. You yeah. know, the digs are the hardest on the transmission for sure. That's where people really break it. Um, especially like they throw it in third car revs out brakes third, like literally obliterates the gear at high RPM with the power adders. What power was it making though? Like when you were, uh, 800 wheel, like it was making a good bit. It was 12, 12 pounds of boost Whipple. Yeah. So a three, six, two, five pulley. And I had the return style fuel system. So that was from juggernaut two twin, 285 pumps. And we made 790 on the dyno, but my clutch was slipping bad. Like mm. that clutch was the clutch I had for three years and I was beating on that thing. I went to the track with that. Actually with Jay and Parker, I hit third gear on the track and the car just goes, Wah! just revs and doesn't move whatsoever. <laughs> White smoke out the back of the Fuck. car. And I was like, in the video, like to go, I think I just blew my transmission. <laughs> Cause I actually thought something bad happened, yeah. but it was the clutch. the clutch. Yeah. Reeked of clutch. The whole track day was ruined. I sat on the sideline, watched Parker go. And then after Parker's like, Hey, you want to do a roll race? And I'm like, all right, I'll do a 60 roll. This car was on the on three big single. So I think that was like, uh, I don't even remember. I think it was like an 86. I might be wrong. Something like that. His car made, his car went nine, nine, eight that night. And maybe a nine nine four uh, at one fifty something. Um, we went on the highway. We did a sixty roll. I got him by like half a car, but that was like after the whole thing with the clutch. So I was surprised it held up. So I was like, oh, if it's gonna hold up for a roll race, I'm just gonna stay on the clutch. Yeah, yeah. We go to the dyno a year later, and we do a one pull. Whole room smells like clutch. Damn. Yeah. So after that. Um, I don't know. I saved up for a built MT82. Another controversial thing I did. Oh, you shouldn't have got the built MT82. You should have got the T56. A lot of people gave me a hard time about that. But I why finally... Didn't you, why didn't you go to T56? Why didn't I? Yeah. Um, because it's just... I already had the carbon drive shaft for the MT82. You have to change your drive shaft, you know? And you also do lose some of these uh, drivetrain functions as well. So that was a thing. Like, you lose... Um, the driving modes. Uh, some people say you can retain the um, the rev match and that type of stuff if you do some sort of harness connection. Yeah. But I was like, let's not do all that. I already have a drive shaft for the MT82. Let's just do it. And it was not cheap. You know, Bill MT82 runs you sixty five hundred bucks. All said and done, shipped to you. All that type of stuff. Uh, Bill T56. I mean, a stock T56 will run you the whole swap kit around 7,500. So it's more expensive by a grand and uh, you do need to change a lot of things. And that's, I just wanted to keep it simple. I've heard good and bad about calamari transmissions, kind of like everything else, you know? So I was like, yeah. I'll give it a shot. If I blow it up, I blow it up. That's yeah. racing, you know? So. What's in it now? The Bill MT-82. Oh, it still has the MT-82? Yeah, Damn. the Bill MT-82. Yeah, so a lot of things, a big misconception people have too is they don't understand that the Bill MT-82 actually uses a T-56 G4 set. So it is T-56 internals inside of the Bill MT-82. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's kind of a T-56. It's technically not one, but it has the, the gear set from a T-56. Like somewhat internals. Yeah. Of T-56. Yeah. So you got a Chevy Trans with Ford motor. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually Chinese transmission. What do you mean? That MT-82 is from China. Oh, no, I was talking about the T-56 oh, internals. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Damn. So are you, are you more of a manual type of guy or automatic? That's the thing. So I, I have the Camaro 10-speed, whatever. I did my passes in that car, 10-0 at 142. Uh, it's a nine-second car with a converter, easy. And I have the Mustang. I've ran 10s in that car. The Mustang, the manual Mustang, should be a nine second car, but since it is a manual car, it is so much harder to dial down and people don't realize that. Like the 60 foot is everything in the quarter mile run. Okay, the car's fast, it'll make up the back half, 
But if your 60 foot's no good, you're not going fast. So I ran a 10, whatever. 60 foot was a 1.7 trash. You know, we're there testing. This is my first pass in two years. Haven't done a pass in a manual car. So I, I run 10 with a bad 60 foot. And um, I go back again. And guess what? I blow up the axle right there. GT350 axle, gone. Yeah, I've seen yeah. that video. Yeah, yeah, so those passes before the 60 foots were no good because the car is bogging out, coming yeah. out the 60 foot. So what do I need to do? I need to raise my launch RPM. I raise it by 1,000 RPM. Goodbye to the axle. Yeah. And what's funny is like before I went to the track, I made a video. I'm like, I don't think the axle is going to hold, but I'm just going to send it anyways. And I have Alex from Lund Racing. Do you know who that is? Alejandro Flores. Oh, uh, no, I'm not sure. So he's, um, you know, Lund Racing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Mustang tuner. Yeah. Um, so they, he has my car. He's tuning my car and that type of stuff. And I'm having a conversation with him. He actually goes to my gym. Super cool guy. Nice. And he tells me, uh, you can do a bonsai run on the car. You want to run a nine? Go ahead and try. Launch at 5,000 RPM. The car won't bog out. You'll take off. Because he, he had an ESS car too as well. I no longer have the whip on the Mustang, by mm. the way. I switched to an ESS G3X. He has the ESS. Uh, he had an ESS Mustang with a built MT82. Guy was launching at near 6,000 RPMs and running nines, but he was launching at 6K. Nice. Yeah, so he told me, you need to raise that launch RPM because you keep bogging. I send him the videos every time I go to the track. I raise the launch RPM. I break the car. Damn. Yeah, yeah but I swapped the... I brought a, a set of stock axles with me. Set, swapped them in an hour and a half, drove back home. Did you tell him, hey, thanks for the advice? Nah, blame. <laughs> <laughs> no, he told me, you're probably going to break them. And I'm like, go fast or break them. Yeah. You know? Uh, damn. So fucking just launching. How'd you feel? You're like... You don't even feel anything, to be honest. You know, I'm hitting there, the walk, walk box. I have my foot down. Ba, 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 ba. Boom. You hear a pop. The car doesn't even move. <laughs> <laughs> and you know immediately, you know, yeah. it's not my first time breaking them. Yeah. I did it two years ago at the track with a Whipple. You so know, you're just, known just to break axles. Oh, yeah, because I God. haven't bought the $2,000 axles. I put the GT350 ones in there because everyone's Wait, like... Didn't you just buy them? No, not yet. Yeah. Are you posted them? Yeah, I posted yeah, yeah. that I want to buy them soon mm. because I need a budget. I'm trying to buy a couple of other things. I'm trying to fix my Audi. <laughs> oh, the S4, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, man, yeah, that's yeah. a problem, child. That one is rough. But, um, yeah, I'm just... The next step is to buy axles. Um, the car has a lot of knock sensor activity at the strip. We don't know if that's the built trans. And a Mustang right there. You hear that? Yeah. But uh, we don't know if it's the transmission because it has straight cut gears. So it whines. Like I'm driving around town. It's like, it sounds like a Jetsons car. What the fuck? Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's just loud. And we think it's the knock sensors getting active from the transmission and the clutch. Yeah. What's the, um, what is the future for the car? For that car? Yeah. I want to run a mid nine. Yeah. Like the, the record right now. On the, a, on the MT82. On right? the MT82. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The record right now for my blower setup manual car is a nine four. Mm. So yeah, that's the goal is to run a mid nine in that car. To beat the record or? Yeah. I'd like to beat the, the record, but it's hard to beat the guy who has the record. Cause it's, uh, I think his name's David Van Norris. From Coyote Direct. That oh, guy. is that the guy? Oh, yeah. He oh, can, okay. He can With drive. the white Ford F-150. Yeah. He can drive that guy. So it, it's going to be hard yeah. to beat him. But he's got a 9.4. Definitely got a lot of seat time on that, too. Yeah. I don't even know if he's stock motor or not, but he probably is. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Hey, shout out to Coyote Direct. Yeah. I don't think I've ever met him before, but I've seen his videos and I just like seen his Instagram posts and that type of stuff. He's got some fast cars. Yeah. Nice. So let's get into... Sully? Yeah, that's the Camaro. The Camaro, yeah. yeah. You could give us uh, the sauce on that, you know. Tell us yeah. about uh, when you first got it, the wrap, you know, because I know it's uh, wrapped in blue and white. Yeah. And, um, so It uh, recently got stolen. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a prank, by the way, but we can talk about that what soon. What do you mean? Uh, so I have a spare key for that car, right? I only gave it to one person. I gave it to my mom because I'm traveling all the time. And I asked her the other day out of curiosity, I'm like, is this, this thing actually got stolen? I need to know right now. Is this a joke or not? Because I have my buddy Devin staying with me, who's been staying with me for like the last month. He's in between travel assignments. He's a travel nurse. So I think he coordinated a prank with my mom because I had asked him for the spare key or my mom for the spare key. 
And she's like, oh, I have it locked away in a safe. And I'm like, why do you all of a sudden have this key locked away in a safe when you always have it on you because you need to move my cars when I'm not here, you know, mm. and that type of stuff. So I kind of got like sketched out by that. And a lot of people were like, oh, why aren't you taking it more seriously? Or like, you're more, why aren't you more concerned? Because I don't think it's real. Like, mm. I, think, I think they're definitely cooking something up. There's too many coincidences because Devin left the night that happened. Oh, damn. Yeah. So what if it's not a prank? Uh, then I don't know. Then I'll, <laughs> then, then I'll hit a realization and be like, it's probably not good, you know, because yeah. first of all, I'm financing that car. I owe 20 grand on it. I'm 35 grand deep in it. There's a lot of money in that car. So yeah. no insurance is going to pay you out for that. Yeah. They'll pay you for the value of the car right now that at Kelly Blue Book's for with no modifications. I didn't report the modifications. They would hike my premium up. So Yeah, they would. That's true. Yeah. And I, I know what's his name, but his his shit got stolen for real, for real. Who, Chino. Jordan? Yeah. His shit was, yeah, was crazy. Bad, bro. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, damn. I mean, you know, most most guys, I mean, I, if you're building a car, you get it stolen, obviously you're going to be hurt by it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, But it's like, damn, like, they fucked this shit up bad. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, if it is a whole big play on everything, I'm going to jump Devin, bro. Like, I'm going <laughs> to jump on him. Because, like, that's not, it's so much of a, it can only go so far, you know? That's kind of serious, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I hope that's not the case, but, like, we'll see. Uh, no, you hope it's the case that they're well, pranking yeah, yeah. you. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. the case, but, like, <laughs> not the case of the other. Yeah. 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 So, talk about the build on it. Like, what uh, have you done to it? So, it's a very simple GPI, dropping rods and pistons. I mean, stock compression, literally stock crankshaft just dropping rods and pistons. Funny story, I did some research and I figured out that the crankshafts actually are not balanced from the factory. My tuner actually told me that. So he's like, you should probably send that thing to the machine shop because GM doesn't have a very good reputation for upholding the standard of actually balancing the crankshafts and that type of stuff. So I stupidly bought drop-in rods and pistons because I thought it was going to be simple and faster to get the car back because they're not going to send it to the machine shop. But the car ended up going to the machine shop because I was scared. You know, I don't throw all this money in the car and then have it blow up because the crankshaft wasn't balanced from the factory and we're banking on that. Yeah. So I don't think it's they're not balanced from the factory. I just from my experience and uh, if you want to correct me, whatever in the comments. But anytime you change any component in the engine, rods and pistons it throw it, you're gonna have counterweights right yeah. and it's gonna just be not um balanced like you say right yeah but that's mm. the thing gpi sells the kit as in this rod and piston combo weighs the same as the factory rod and piston so you're good to throw it in and don't don't get mm. me wrong they're they do it all the time you know they sell this kit to people all the time they have no problem i just took it as an extra safety thing gotcha. because i'm like i have the motor apart Let's send it to the machine shop anyways. Yeah. And the only downside of it was the fact that it sat at the machine shop for a while. Machine work takes a long time, especially in a busy area. Like, you know, it was here in Orlando, actually. The motor was here. And it took a while, but I would rather do that for the, like, uh, peace of mind. So was it balanced? Did, I mean, was it off balance when they put it on? Or? They didn't tell me anything. They just oh, took damn. pictures. I asked them to take pictures of the crankshaft and the balancing. They marked it up, whatever that means. <laughs> I'm not yeah. a machinist. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's it. That, that's all they showed me. You know, it would have been cool if you would have, uh, if you would have told them, "Hey, can you drop them in and see then if they're it. balanced?" Yeah. And then if they're not, that's kind of fucking sketch. Yeah. Because you have a company selling, you know, rods and pistons that are balanced for that crank, and then they're not. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, um, yeah, I definitely see what you're saying. But, again, it, I don't think it would be on GPI's end because they're a very prestigious. Reputable company? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, for LT. Very good. They got fast cars. They know what they're doing. It would be on GM's end, if anything. That's what I would feel like. Like, my personal opinion, I don't think it would be on GPI. But that's why I just took that extra step to do that. I mean, besides that, the car really doesn't have anything else special. It's got a boost cam from GP Tuning. He's over in California. It's got the cam kit, supporting mods for it. Uh, he 
he did the custom cam for yeah. the boost. He specced it out. Uh, it has stock heads. It's nothing crazy. It's just a rod and piston car with a Whipple. Uh, I did add port injection. I did that whole thing. Um, Damn, that was a lot, right? Yeah, that was a lot of work. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I did the aux pump, too. So I drilled into the fuel tank, uh, added the external fuel pump. I set up all the fuel lines running from the fuel tank back so that it could feed the port injection, too. Yeah. Uh, made all of that. Uh, threw some 1,000cc injectors in there from Fuel Injector Clinic. Or connection, actually. I always get the two mixed up. And then... Yeah, that fuel system's good for like 950 wheel in an LT car. So, yeah, it's pretty good. And the, why did you do the wrap like it is? Half right? like that? Yeah. Honestly, I don't even know. Like, it was just an idea that came to me. I was like, all right, let's do it. I had uh, my powder coat guy do the drip on the Whipple. Mm -hmm. And he actually kind of came up with the idea. And I was like, okay, just run with it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I seen the the whip or the the top match the top yeah. the top hat match the uh the car. I was like, okay, cool, you know. Yeah, I just rode with the original idea. And it, what what uh has uh had B locks on it right now, right? No, it has VMSs like just oh. very standard drag pack. Don't even have the front runners for it, and it was running ten o. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a pretty fast car. Like, Who I'm tuned not gonna it? Lie. Uh, R thirty two. Okay. Yeah, he's out here in the west coast of Florida, about two hours from here. He's very good. Yeah. He uh, has some fast cars. So I got introduced to him by my friends who run their um, their NA Camaros and stuff, big cam stuff. Yeah. So do you have any um, or knowledge or experience on the, like an NA Camaro versus a NA Mustang? I think an NA Camaro will eat a built NA Mustang any day of the week. Why yeah. is that? Because... I don't know. Like, I, the fastest <laughs> NA Mustang I've seen, like, actually NA, half of these people that claim NA are having a bottle in the car. But um, the fastest one I've seen, like, roll wise is like low sixes. I've seen some NA Camaros and like the fives, you know, like pretty, really? pretty quick, 60 to 30. Uh, That's fucking fast for NA yeah, Camaro. I've seen someone in the high fives. Yeah. Are you pulling my leg, Toby? No, I swear to God. Like, Damn. But high fives. Yeah. Like close to sixes, you know, but high fives. I've seen some very fast ones. Wait, what do you, what do you mean high fives? You're talking about like dragging 60, numbers? 60 or? to 130. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. Numbers. Got you, got you, got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like roll race. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. What about quarter miles? Is that my phone? That has to be your phone. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. What the fuck? Um, quarter mile? I mean, I, I know a full bolt-on SS is what, like running 10 nines with the eight speed? I think so, yeah. They're pretty quick. I mean, I've seen... I know one guy who lives out here in Orlando. His name's Caesar. He's my friend. I think he went 10-0 at, like, 136. Oh, damn. NA? Nah, there's faster NA cars. Yeah, yeah, there's faster, but I'm saying, like, oh, personally, yeah. okay. that's what I know, yeah. Yeah. I know there are ones in the nines. I mean, Cletus had one in the mid-nines. Yeah. Man, stick car, too. Yeah. NA. Yeah. Pretty, pretty crazy. What do you think? There's faster NA Mustangs or faster NA Camaros? No, faster NA Camaros. For yeah, sure. for sure. I know uh, Midnight had. Um, Why is that though? That's the thing I'm trying to understand. Like, I think that is, I think um, just the Mustangs, they accelerate on boost. Yeah. You know, you, you there's go, no point of even. That's what I keep telling people. Like, oh, should I do an NA build on a on a Mustang? Why would you spend that money? You know, cams, all that labor, all in. It's not worth it. What it's you, not. Why? It's when not. you could spend the same money on boost and be faster. Yeah. So it's just definitely see faster NA Camaros for sure. Yeah. But I'm not big in the NA scene, like I told you, you know. Yeah. I, I used to be. So like when I when I build my truck, and I'm going to get off the topic of me right now, but I'm just going to toot my own horn. When I built my uh, Silverado single cab, um, I was in A. It's a shit ton of money. Literally heads, 3,500 bucks for heads, you know. Uh, PRC 237 heads, um, big cam, you know, C uh, custom grind from Texas Speed. And you're just like, everything is bigger when you go in A, right? Uh, Holly High Ram, uh, you know, it's everything is, it's, it's, to me, it's pointless going in A. It's yeah. pointless. Like, it's, if you're, if you want power, it's pointless. If you want, if you want a record, go ahead and spend all the fucking money. But I tell you what, if on a Mustang or fucking on a on a Chevy, you have to like 
on an LS, you have to change for a cheap insurance. You have to change push rods, lifters, right? That's cheap insurance. You know, that's what you have to do. And then put a turbo kit, yeah. go pro charger, go fucking, you know, Whipple. Then fucking buying a cam and all this shit. Well, like on the Chevys, you have to have a custom grind boost cam. Yeah. You know, you can't use the factory cams. Yeah, because but, those cars are just not suited, like uh, volumetric efficiency wise, from the factory to make the power on the stock parts. You need the cam to adjust everything to bring yeah. in more air. Whereas the Mustang, you know, 100% VE from the factory, the car is set up for boost perfectly right there and you don't need to touch it. Yep. yep. So that's the thing. Oh, uh, people tell me, you want to build a Mustang or a Camaro, what do you recommend? I want to do either or. And I tell them, do you want to put way more money, and this might get people heated, but like you want to put way more money into the Camaro to be just as fast as the Mustang, that mod for mod is going to be way faster. That's what I think. That's my personal opinion, you know? What about money-wise? You think it's... Oh, it's cheap to make power in a Mustang. Mm. Oh, it's so cheap. Like what? Oil pump gears, crankshaft, sprocket, boost. I mean, there's people getting these, like I said, the used kits. You spend like four grand on a kit. What kit is that? Like, there's pro chargers and stuff. You okay. can get Whipples and that type of stuff. I mean, they, they bought a, my friend just bought a Whipple for like six grand, Gen 5 Whipple for his Mustang. Yeah. And he's oil pump gears, Whipple, fuel system. So what? You're like 11 grand in it. Car's fast. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. And that's what, like 900, 800? Yeah, 900. I mean, the 10R80 is not going to hold forever, but it will hold forever. Got to get it built by midnight, man. Yeah. Got to get it built midnight 10R80 trans. Yeah. And Midnight is where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you say that? They got fast cars. Yeah. I mean, they seem to be the ones who have got it down. RSA is good, too. So uh, I know RSA because they used to be rare fab right next to Palm Beach Dino. And... I used to go to Palm Beach Dino for the tune for my Mustang. They were right next door. Yeah. I saw their work. I mean, the guy showed me his 10 speeds. I, know, uh, I forgot his name, but it was the owner. He showed me the 10 speeds and how they're doing stuff to make like a crazy 10 speed. Yeah. That can take the power. Why did you switch from Palm Beach to Lund? Oh, man, there's a whole lore behind that one. Yeah, kind of crazy, but I guess, I don't know. I was having a lot of like communication problems with them. I don't know. I can't speak on the state now because I was back then. And I just feel like Lund has the records for a reason. You know, Lund knows what they're doing. I just switched. Everyone else who was around me was Lund racing too. So I was just like, eh, I'll go to Lund. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, like outstanding reason. Any, you know? any, did you notice anything different about the car, how it performed or? I mean, not not really no i mean i did have a good bit of like detonation like i had a good bit of detonation on the other tune but who knows you know that on the palm beach dino yeah tune? okay but who knows that could have been in between revisions we're not 100 percent done you can't like just jump to conclusions you have this and you have that you know i'm i like preach that a lot because you can't just make these comparisons you need to like Okay, well, was it done fully? Probably not, because the car was fresh with the Whipple. Yeah. And then I switched to Lund very quick, so it wasn't, like, refined and done. But I'll tell you what, with, with Lund, they move fast. You know, they send you the base file. Base file is pretty much almost perfect already, and they make little revisions. You're done in, like, two or three. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you ever tinker with stuff? Like, when you're doing revisions, do you ever, like, look into the tables? or? Oh, yeah. I mean, I want to know if the car is running right. Um I don't do a pool without having the log open. So I'm constantly reading like the requested fuel pressure, uh, the pump requested pressure, the actual pressure, things like um, the detonation's a big one because I don't want my car detonating. Like that's definitely not a good thing. I think a lot of people like will go to these companies and just slap the tune on their car and call it. You know, they'll never open the log or ever look at it, but I'm constantly looking at it and it helps me diagnose things when they're, not working as they should be oh okay got you yeah like i can tell i'm down a fuel pump because i'm dropping fuel rail pressure at wide open so yeah. i wouldn't even really know technically because my other pump is kind of like overcompensating but you can tell because you can see it numerically on there it's not like the car will break up and stuff yeah you'll still pull but you'll detonate you know what i'm saying and i want to see it 
I you've been getting a lot of heat, right? Yeah. Like, oh, it's the dude's just fucking pranking us. Oh yeah. Because he he wants uh, the cloud or he wants a. Uh, he wants the views and shit like that, right? Yeah, that's what everyone always says, though. Like, yeah. everything is about the cloud, the mm. views, that type of stuff. I mean, yeah. it's the same story over yeah, and over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All right. <laughs> and go into the, uh, the S4. Like, uh, what made you get an Audi? Bro, honestly, I don't even really know. Like, I saw my friend had one. I was like, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I saw that they... When running right, <laughs> when they run right, they're very quick off the dig. You know, you've got guys full bolt on making close to 500 wheel running mid tens now. Yeah. And they're just fun cars. I mean, the best I got out of that car, while it was running sem- somewhat decently, still had problems, was an 11 1 and 0 to 60 and 3.2. But the thing is, is like, I would go on the street, launch it, run a 0 to 60 and 3.4. Yeah. Like, I can't do that in my other cars, you know? It's just like crazy. I think it's on my phone again. Yeah, you're good. So it's just like a different thing. And I was like, I need a daily driver that will get some gas mileage, you know? And I got that. Long story Mm -hmm. short, that car does not (laughs) want to cooperate with me at all. I mean, it's just problem after problem. And I don't even daily it. Yeah. I daily the Camaro or the Mustang over it any day of the week. Yeah. Well, you had issues with the Mustang too, right? For a while. No, I never had real issues with that. Or was Mustang. it the Mustang? Oh no, it was the Mustang. Yeah, because I remember you posted that you you daily drive the the Camaro more. I did. I did that because I put the Mustang on the the nineteen mil. I mean the uh, nineteen pounds of boost pulley, so it's straight eighty five all the time, no pump gas, nothing. Yeah. So it's just not practical for daily driving. Like say for example, I drive up to Orlando like today. Yeah. I'm gonna fill up like two times on the way here. It's not worth it. So that's why I chose the Camaro to daily over that because I could, you got the flex fuel sensor. You throw the 93 in there, you drive, whatever. They don't have that on Mustangs? No, they're figuring it out. They're very close to doing it. Yeah. Not for boosted application. They have it for NA, but Mm -hmm. not for boosted, but they're very close to getting it done. I think Lund is, I think a few other companies have it done already, but Lund is like close to getting it done. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that about the Mustangs, honestly. Yeah. So it's, Straight 85 or 90, uh, 93, if you make over a certain amount of boost, I think it's like over 11 PSI, you yeah. need to run the 85. Yeah. yeah. So are you selling the S4 or? I'm going to try and fix it. I mean, I stayed up. All, that's why I didn't sleep last night because I was like, I'm really going to fix this thing and I'm going to go to Gainesville Raceway on Friday and make a pass, a mid-10 second pass in it. Well, it doesn't want to work with me. I'm going to yeah. try and fix it. But the thing is, it's like, I know American cars. I can reach out to people that yeah. can help me with American cars, but German cars, it's so much more complicated. And not yeah. a lot of people know that much about them. So it's... it's you got Titan right there in Orlando. Yeah. Well, they're they're big into German. Oh, uh, they do... Ah, uh, fuck. I know they do the Supra. They do the Beamers. They do... I'm not sure they do Audi. They yeah. do Lamborghini. I need to find a good Audi shop that could help me out because... Yeah. I'm in over my head with that car. Yeah. Like, I can only do so much. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do on it? Well, I did, a, like, a whole bunch of maintenance. Yeah. Just, like... General maintenance. General right? maintenance. Okay. Like, change out all the fuel pumps, change out plugs, change out the PCV. That's a big thing. Yeah. And that type of stuff. But um, have you seen my other car, the, the new Edge? The white Mustang? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. the wrapped one. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going to get into after. Yeah, that one's pretty fun. Uh, I haven't even... LS swap, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, not LS, but L20. You know the Vortec, the 4.8 Vortec? The f- Out of a Silverado. L20? Yeah, that's what it's called. The L20, apparently. It's the 4.8 Vortec. What year? What year? 2015 Silverado. Oh, Gen so it's, 4. An, it's an LT. That's what that is? Yeah, it's an LT. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so that engine is in that car. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. Out of a 15 Silverado. Why'd they say L20? I don't know. That's what they said on the thing. The hmm. guy told me. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know much about the LS. It's funny stuff. because when you when you get it, but it's, it wouldn't be a Vortec then. It says 4.8 Vortec. Yeah, I don't know. So it's, that so on the block, like yeah, uh, the, it says 4.8. In five, the back? And 5.3, yeah. Yeah, 4.8 slash 5.3. Yeah. 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 Same thing. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it's an LT. But that's all. That's about us. Yeah, it's it's gapped rings. Stock, stock bottom end. Um, 
some sort of heads. I don't even know what heads are on it and a cam. So uh, turboed, right? Single. Yeah, it's turbo. Single. Yeah. yeah seventy six. Seven. No, seventy eight. Seventy six. Yeah. Bar winner. I have no clue. Oh, I thought. I yeah. Think, I thought I seen. I remember you posted it, and I was. I, I was looking at the engine. I thought I seen Bar Warner. I'm not too sure though. No, it's a. Uh, oh no, I do actually know the brand. I looked at it the other day. VS Racing. VS. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're Chinese, but they're good though. Yeah, it's they, uh, those fucking make power. Yeah, like, that's you what can, I've been researching. They're a little bit on the cheaper side. They but, are. Um, a lot of people run them. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely, they make power for sure. Yeah. They can make power. That car is definitely fun. The problem is, is like I don't have a truck and trailer. It's on a full drag pack. I don't even have street tires for it. So I need to bring it to the track on a truck and trailer. Yeah. That's a truck and trailer type car, you know. So it's, it's fully gutted? Oh, yeah. It's fully gutted. I gutted it. Uh, the previous owner didn't have it gutted, but I gutted it out. Um, it's, it has a cage, five-point harnesses, the what the Kirky seats, and no power steering, no AC, Nothing. It's straight race car. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it is not a street car at all. Like, I'll drive it on the street for fun, you know, do a couple hits, yeah. but it is not comfortable. Is it on an aftermarket ECU? Yeah, Holly Terminator X V2. Yeah. Okay, who tunes that one for you? Uh, I don't know. From All I know is that it's Cletus's tuner's friend. Okay. Yeah, is it Tune em All? Is that his name? I'm not sure, honestly. I, like I'd that. be lying to you if I yeah. say something. yeah. Why, why did you buy that car? Is there, a re, is there a reason? Just for fun. Okay, just to like. Yeah, like it's a good it's a good car to mess around with. I mean, you blow it up. What do you you go to the junkyard? You pull another one. You throw it in there. <laughs> um, I've got a lot of friends who build them. Like they do new edge LS swaps. That's all they do. And the goal with that car is actually to put a built bottom end in it and put twins like sticking up like that. Oh yeah. yeah. It's got a built TH four hundred already too. So. Definitely. Wait, didn't you burn the wrap on it? No, the car lit on fire. Like, legitimately caught on fire. Damn. Yeah. Uh, so, basically, the previous owner had put headlights, taillights on it. He used none of the factory harnesses. So, he wired it all up himself to the battery. He ran... Oh, my God. No fuses, no relays, nothing. And I talked to him about it. He's like, sorry about that, man. I was in a rush and I never used them because it's not a street car. So you went straight power. Yeah, it's just straight power, current. So mind you, I'm sitting in the car in the driveway, flip the headlights on, the switch, and I kid you not, not even 10 seconds later, the car is on fire. Damn. The one wire from the switch back, whew, from the inside of the car all the way to the headlight on fire. I jump. To the passenger seat, I always carry a fire extinguisher in all these cars. Pull the pin, try and squeeze it, nothing. Oh my. Yeah. So I jump out the car, I'm screaming, like, yo, Damn. yo, Devin, my boy Devin, the car's gonna be in fire. Like, it's gonna burn the ground and burn the house down in 30 <laughs> seconds from now if we don't find a fire extinguisher. And he freezes like a deer in headlights. Oh my God. Just stares at me. And I'm like, we got to do something. Yeah. Thankfully, my sister hears me screaming, and she comes running with the fire extinguisher from the, from the house. Yeah. Put it out. It was fine. Nothing else burned. We were good. But, like, that was a close call. That was not a good experience at all. It was actually kind of scary because, like, I've never had that happen before. And it was just, like, a realization, you know. I was like, oh, people's cars light on fire, right? Probably takes, like, a minute to get on fire. No, it happens like that. Yeah. Yeah. So my truck caught on fire because the fucking idiot that built my shit, he didn't tighten the oil line that goes underneath the turbo. Mm -hmm. It wasn't tightened, and the oil caught on the blanket that is the uh, the turbo blanket, and it caught fire. And that shit was crazy. It went like, up in flames. It fast, went up in right? flames. So like I was driving, it was it, it didn't happen while I was driving. It was probably good. It happened when I stopped at my like in front of my house. And it just boom, the fucking flames. Yeah. And I was like, damn. And my my neighbor, um, he deals with uh, smoke, smoke, what are they called? Fire, fire, fire extinguishers. extinguishers yeah. yeah, he deals with all that shit. So he had like 20 of them at his house. 
And like it was on fire, and then I, I was like I ran inside, grabbed like a bucket of water. I didn't even have a fire extinguisher or nothing. Yeah, you always gotta carry one. Oh yeah, car. now yeah, now I know. And so he ran to my truck. He seen that the the, the truck was on fire, and he like blew it. But the the um, the foam fucked my intake because my my intake was uh powder coated. Mm-hmm. So like when that foam gets on the intake or on powder coat, whatever the fuck. It, it like, eats it up. Yeah, right? it eats yeah. it. And I'm like, damn, that shit was brutal, bro. But you were able to save it. Yeah. 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 You're lu- you're lucky because, I mean, if I wasn't home with a backup fire extinguisher, that thing would have been done. Cooked. Burned to the ground, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. So your plan is just to build it and just have fun with it, right? Yeah, it's it's a nine-second car. I mean, it's got a high-stall converter. I can launch at 4,200. It's got a trans brake, got a bump. So I got bam, bam, bam. It'll run like a high nine. Yeah. It ran a a nine nine two at like one forty, but that was leaving on seven pounds. It's leaving on ten now, so yeah. it, it's got like a mid nine in it, I think. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna ramp. I mean, I think should, that thing should go faster. To be honest, it's built fucking yeah. right. It's just the fact that we're not pushing the motor that yeah. hard because we don't want to pop it. Yeah. I don't want to pop it this fast. I mean, if I really wanted to like pop it, I'd put like a different wastegate spring in, bigger injectors and or boost send controller, it. yeah. 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 But I don't want to do that just yet. Yeah. And I'm just going to run my time with it and then probably not blow it up cuz I don't want to take out the heads and all that type of stuff and then put a built bottom end and twins yeah. on it. So I have to ask you because I asked these guys yesterday, whatever happened to you and uh Parker and Jay? Like our the, the relationship, relationship together? Yeah. So that's a long story, but I never had a problem with Parker. Actually, never had a problem with Jay. We did have a like a disagreement about one thing though. So Jay was supposed to build my car, uh, the Camaro, and it just didn't work out because of time frame and that type of stuff. I was in school graduating. Jay had the car. Um, He didn't get started on it yet. I mean, nothing against him. He was busy, and basically, I took my car from there and had a different shop build it, and. I think when I picked my car up, I had like a door ding in it and I had asked a question about like, uh, how can we get this fixed and that type of stuff. And that just like created animosity between like the both of us. So it was never like a Parker J thing. Uh, like the, th- like all three of us not agreeing with each other, but I guess we, Jay and I had a disagreement about that. Yeah. And then it just like never let go. Mm. Yeah. So it was like small. Yeah. It was stupid stuff, you know? disagreements between people and it was never like a big thing you know? yeah because i know that whenever i was scrolling through our socials i was like damn they used to like uh make videos together yeah so the i met jay because my my mustang was having an issue and he offered to help me fix it i went was going to uf at the time so it was an hour away from where jay lived go to valdosta it's not a big deal from gainesville so i would just hop over there whatever we would hang out and then Parker had like 10,000 followers at the time, and Jay set up a race between us. Yeah. So that's how I met all of them. So I met Jay first. Like, yeah. I, I was the first one to meet Jay. We were friends. And then Parker came to race me, and then we all became friends. That's how, like, the circle was. Yeah. Yeah. But so they're still cool, though, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, we're still cool. I mean, I, I hang out with Parker when I'm here in Orlando, here and there. I don't really see Jay because he's up in Georgia. Yeah. I saw him at the track last time, but yeah. Did you say, what's up? Hey, what's up? Oh, yeah, I said, what's up? And he he ran his pass. I was like, good luck, all that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I think, like, some some guys probably miss y'all, like, in the videos oh, and yeah, stuff. Oh, yeah, together? Yeah. We, had, we definitely had a good thing. I mean, if any time you collaborate with people that have a following, you do, like, better, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just good to revolve with people that are always making videos and that type of stuff. And they're good about that. They're always posting. I'm for sure see people missing the three of us because we always would. That's how it originally started, you know? Yeah. It was me first and then bringing Jay into it then bringing Parker. And then we kind of just all made videos together. So it was like the original like trio. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you start a, um, like a detailing product? Yeah. Line? Yeah. So I, I do, um, uh, it's pretty cool. You can check it out. Zesty Wash. Like, yeah. It's got a silly name, but it's pretty cool because it's a colored snow foam. So like you can't do a colored snow foam at home. Typically, you would have to go to the driving car washes and spray the multi tricolor. Well, we brought that ability to do that 
to your home front, you know, you can buy the bottle, spray the pink foam. It smells like strawberries. It's cool. We're releasing like other colors very soon. We're doing green apple. So it'll shoot green foam and then blue raspberry. And then we have pineapple coming out, just a couple of them. And then, yeah. yeah. What was your, um, maybe your perception on it? Like what, is, you know, do you just wanted a product or? I don't know. I just always thought it was a cool idea. It was actually Devin's idea. He's my partner for that. He was like, yo, I got a really good idea. We should do this and make it yeah. color foam and that, all that type of stuff. And I was like, you know, that's actually a really good idea. That's pretty cool. Like it's unique because you can't do that with any other wash. So mm. it brings something else to it. Besides like the fact that I can go to Walmart and buy like five different foam foams and they're all going to come out white, you know, it's, it gotcha. adds something to it. Like yeah, it's more yeah. entertaining in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Cause I, I seen it in the comments. They're like, Oh, this guy's copying these other guys. Yeah. And, you know, like, yeah. What are sure. your thoughts on that? So I think that recently happened with me spraying myself with it. Yeah. But we did that first. Yeah. Devin and I did it like four months ago yeah. for our product launch. Like I just sprayed Devin with the foam and covered him. And I guess Parker did it recently when he dropped his line. And I guess uh, people were just like trying to stir stuff up. Like we said in the beginning, yeah. I always love the animosity to create problems where there aren't problems. Yeah. You know? Do you, um, do you like ship out every day or how did the, yeah, when so did you launch that? I launched it like, mm, it couldn't have been too long ago. I, I launched it in California actually, because we did like a whole professional shoot That's two months ago. Um, we ship and package all of the stuff ourselves. So I do it. I take the bottle package, yeah. get the order, and then I send it out, drop it off at the post office. Yeah. We don't have any fulfillment yet. It's just like small business right now. So you package everything and yeah, I package damn. everything. Hmm. Put the label on everything. Go post office. Drop it off. Yeah. Why? Why zesty wash? Cause Devin's like a little zesty. Like I don't know if you've ever seen Devin. He's like a little zesty. So I yeah. gave him a nickname, the Zesty Man. <laughs> and people loved it, man. Yeah. People, oh my God, is that the Zesty Man? <laughs> I'll never forget this this time when I, I'm bringing my Camaro home from the shop. Like after they put the built motor together, and, yeah. and they made a mistake with the fuel pump not lashing it properly. So the car like leaves us stranded on the highway and we walk to ale house walk into ale house after the tow truck comes and this kid goes is that the zesty man like from across <laughs> the restaurant and we died man oh like that was my so God. funny so we just kept it rolling yeah kept the name in it yeah that's fucking funny yeah zesty man that dude is probably like, damn. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, he turned at me and he's like, fuck you. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, I made it like this whole big thing. That's fucking funny. They don't even know him by his first name. They just oh, call him the Zesty Man. That's yeah. kind of good, though. <laughs> yeah. He's still low key, right? Yeah. He's like all, telling all the time we go somewhere, Zesty Man? Yeah. That's how they know him. Yeah. <laughs> Would you consider yourself a, um, like a humble TikTok girl? Yeah. I mean, there's, like, some pretty outlandish behavior from creators that have a big following. Yeah. I'm just like, bro, I'm a normal person like you. I just happen to, sh to make a living off of doing this, yeah. and I'm passionate about it. It's no different than some, a regular person that is just, like, doing their own thing in their own right. So it's just I don't get when people have, like, an ego about that type of stuff. Like, oh, I'm, I'm big news. I'm a big shot. Bro, it's a, it's a kid's app, like. Come on now. Yeah. Like, you're not a, a big shot. That's what that's how I view it. It's yeah. just like, I'm a normal person. I just post videos. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So what are your thoughts on, like, like when people do think you're... Like a... Like a, like a douche. So like, they, they... I don't understand how they get that perception, but they get that perception based off of videos. And the weirdest thing that I think is going on on the internet is that people develop these opinions about you without actually knowing you. Because I'm sure you had a preconception of me, right? Based off of my image personality, but you're sitting here talking to me, I'm talking to you like a normal human yeah, yeah, being. Yeah. It's chill, you know what I'm saying? It's all, again, a lot of things get taken out of context based off of internet personas. We make a joke on the internet, doesn't mean that we're always thinking that way. Or we say something yeah. in a moment where we're not right. Well, guess what? It gets put on blast because 
were a creator, yeah. right? So people think, oh, he thought this way or he did this. He's a bad person. But right. you sit down and have a conversation with these people that you think are bad people. They're normal people, bro. Like, they're just yeah. it's chill. You know what I'm saying? Like, It was kind of controversial. There's There's been, like, a few things. The thing that people don't understand, like, I will... I will never look for conflict, right? You'll never see me in someone's comment section talking garbage. I won't make a post about someone talking garbage because that's not, I don't believe in that type of stuff. You know, I don't have time in my day to think negatively about someone else. Yeah. So if you see me making a video about someone, I personally believe that they did me dirty in some right. And that's why I'm making a video about it. And half the time, now I'd say a good 75% of the time, it's a response to them. It's not me saying anything. Like, I will not go look for trouble, but I have looked for trouble before. It was well-deserved. You know, it was like a get-back type of thing, and that was not what towards was that? any other creators. Oh, I had a whole big falling out with the roommate that was living with us with Parker. That's probably what you're thinking about. Is that with Nick? No, not Nick. I never had a problem with Nick. So, oh. Yeah, yeah, I didn't really know Nick like that. Mm, okay. I met Nick a few times. I pulled yeah. his TH400 out of his S2000. That's about the extent I met Nick. Yeah. Yeah. What was that guy then? The, the Oh, this was the, a whole problem with that Xander guy that was living with us in Kissimmee with Parker. That yeah. was the or, original house. So we had all moved in. We had a falling out. It's whatever at the end of the day. But like he broke up a lot of personal relationships. Really? And yeah, that's what I didn't like. And it just negatively impacted everything because he had, we had gone from being close friends, like the whole group, to having everyone swayed against me based off of some BS. So that's why I was like not riding was with it. Was the BS true though? No. Oh. Uh, like it was all like backhanded, like lies that were made up to make someone look bad against each other. And it would flip flop based on who was hanging out with who. So I just didn't like that. And then I ended up like deciding to move out of the house, and come back home. So, so y'all were all roommates at one point. Oh, yeah. So you, Parker, Parker Xander, and... So Parker wasn't living there. Parker never had ever, like, hung out with me, or we never lived together. He was just on the lease. So okay. Parker was in Georgia finishing up whatever. I was in college finishing up. I signed the lease. I live in Orlando while still doing college. I'm back and forth between Gainesville and Orlando. And Xander was living with me. And Parker wasn't there. When I left, Parker came about two weeks later. Damn. He moved in, yeah. So Parker and I never lived together, no. Mm. So Xander's the one that didn't pay the rent? No, that's Nick. Oh, okay, that's damn. That's a whole Nick getting, thing. Yeah, yeah. I, we heard the story yesterday. Yeah, that's yeah. the whole Nick situation. Like yeah. I said, I don't know Nick like that to comment yeah. on that. So, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So they, they know him like that. I yeah, don't, yeah. They had personal dealings with him. So do you, are you still in communication with Xander? Or? Not really. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, it's just like bad blood. Yeah. I don't, I don't really have bad blood with anyone, but I'll tell you, I have bad blood with him. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I don't, like, I don't have any problem saying it either. I made it known. Yeah. So, Damn, um, it must have been fucking. Yeah. So, one thing that they said is, like, if most of the beef doesn't get posted, right? Real, real life beef, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. But when it does get posted, it's probably because it was 10 times worse in person yeah. than online. Oh, yeah. Damn. That, that's true. So you got to look at it like from a book value, right? Like a face value. If you're going to talk about something, like it's got to actually aggravate you and bother you. That's how I see it. In that's my, true. My point of view. Like if it's some petty bullshit, we're not going to really discuss it. Like why? Unless you're really clout like hungry. Oh, let's make a big deal out of this and that and this. Let's post about it. Then yeah. yeah. But like if you're actually doing someone dirty, bro. That's when I get mad, like, and it was a lot of it against me. Yeah. So even Parker, like, didn't like me at a certain time because he was being fed bullshit. Oh, yeah. damn. So that's why you didn't really see us making videos anymore because he was listening out in his ear to somebody who was right beside him. I'm nowhere in the picture. He doesn't get to hear my side of anything. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. You get those a lot. You get people like that a lot. Oh, I mean, yeah. not a lot, but you, they come around, you know? Yeah. That's, they, that's they the weed biggest out. thing with social media. Like, it's crazy what people will do to try and befriend you to get that benefit out of you. It's yeah. nuts. Like, they will go to the craziest extent 
And then there's some really real and genuine people that you meet at the same time that are awesome. Yeah. So it's like, that's the trade off. You got to deal with that to meet the good people. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're on the podcast, man. You're on the podcast yeah, right exactly. now. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know you mentioned uh, Ca- California a lot. Is there a reason why you do it over there than Florida? Uh, no, nah, because my friend lives out there. We go oh, visit okay. him and stuff. We've been out there like twice. We're going back like next month. So, uh, yeah, it's just, it's cool. California scene's different. They're not allowed to have fast cars over there. So they, they do, though. They, they have. Here and there, like from the meets that I went to, it was mostly show cars like mm. that that they were doing and i was asking people like yo what's up with like where like where are the really fast cars at oh it's not as common as it is in florida they were telling me yeah because of obviously the emissions right right I, I do i know i hear i hear you i see where you're coming from but dude they have some fast cars yeah they California. have fast cars and they street race like yeah. i mean i know it's super illegal and all this and that, but like they no, they but could, it's Mexico's right there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you do a lot of street racing, or do you prefer I, the track? I prefer the track. Why? I don't know. It's just like hard to trust people because a lot of people jump in like these nine hundred horsepower cars, and they're 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 out there testing their car for the first time. It's just like can't really trust anyone. You can drive perfectly, and then. Oh, you're something. talking about trust them as far as driving. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. someone's beside you. You you both are going 150. Like, come on. It's dangerous. At the end of the day, it's dangerous. I don't really... YOLO, bro. Yeah, I don't, like, <laughs> I don't really like trusting people like that. I mean, I do it here and there, but I definitely did it a lot before. I think the, the accident scared it a good bit out of me, mm. where I don't want to do it as much. I like the track. Like, I like to go to the track. It's, it's official. You run your time yeah it's safer and you never know like you're getting in these ho- high horsepower cars you you don't control them you know their machine you never know what can happen so I, every time i go i'm scared you know it's, yeah it's a good thing to be scared of the car like it's definitely keeps you alive stops you from pushing the limits too hard yeah i think before i had that accident i was pushing the limits a lot oh so you didn't you, you weren't like really taming yourself no yeah like mm. I'm, let's do a hit right now. Bam! Let's oh, let's damn. do all that. Yeah. Like I'm more calm down now. Like it's so the accident kind of like flip. Like it flips a switch where you're yeah. like more self aware that you're not invincible in this car. Like I got you, you think you're a driver, you're not. You know, like <laughs> that car can definitely <laughs> fuck you up. Yeah, if you yeah. don't respect it, that's yeah. the thing. Any advice out there to those that want to uh, maybe get into TikTok or build a car? Yeah, so the TikTok formula is very simple, right? You just need to be consistent. That's all there is to it. You need to create consistent quality content. Uh, when I first started posting, I was posting five times a day, seven days a week. It's a been, lot. Been doing it since then. So that's all it is. It's just consistency, consistency, consistency. It will take off if you keep going. Yeah. It's hard to like see it, but you got to think. You got to keep going. And you... Correct me if I'm wrong, but do you post, I mean, do you create a video once a day? More than that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I create like four videos a day. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. I know people that create one week of content in one day. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's so crazy. like they'll, they'll like the whole day they'll um, make videos. They'll make like uh, shorts, which you could say, and one day. Like they'll make five, they'll make in that one day, they'll make 35 shorts. Yeah, no. So, I, like on Tuesday, let's say they start on Monday, on Tuesday, they're posting Tuesday shit. On, on Wednesday, they're posting, they're not making the videos. Everything's already like done. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. They're already there. It's already done. So, like the next week, they'll start on Monday recording, post, and then they'll just keep on. And then Tuesday through Sunday, they're not recording a video, they're just posting. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, I I create videos every day. Damn. Yeah. That's that's badass. Yeah, definitely constant. Um, what about always something? Yeah. What about those who want to build a car? Because I mean, do you think you're one of the only? Are do you think you're one of the only TikTokers that put their hands on their cars? I wouldn't say the only one, but I definitely think I'm putting my hands on cars more than a lot of people. Um, there's definitely people that are doing way more than I am, you know. People say I'm a bolt-on guy. That's another big one. Oh, you're just a bolt-on guy. But, 
I mean, I think you should try to do it yourself because at the end of the day, it's valuable information. And if you ever do need to fix something, you're not reliant on someone else and you're not finding yourself in these situations where your car is sitting for a long time and that type of stuff. That's just the beauty of working on it yourself is you figure it out for yourself so you can know what's going on and get it done now instead of waiting. Yeah, you mean both on guy just ratcheting, right? Not really diagnostic, right? Not really. No, like. like, Or what do you mean by that? I'll put a a clutch, a transmission. I'll do everything to the car, like entire drive line. And people say, "Oh, you're just bolting parts on," because you're not building motors. You know? Yeah, that's what they say. What the hell? Yeah, so you're just a bolt on guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it takes a lot of machine work to build a motor. Oh yeah. So I I, wouldn't, I don't. The thing is, like, I wouldn't take one of my expensive thirteen thousand dollar. I take the new edge engine. I'll open that up. Like, I don't care. <laughs> I'll take that thing. I'll open yeah. it up. But like a new Coyote, no, nah, I won't open it unless I have someone there that has done it before. Then I will do it. Yeah, yeah. So now that you have both platforms, you have the Camaro, you have the Mustang, right? What do you prefer to drag race? The the Camaro or the Mustang? Well, the Camaro is a pretty simple formula. I mean, you do a burnout, you get to the line, you hold the stall on the converter, you let go of the brake. If you hook, you stay in it. If you don't, you let off and you pedal it. It's pretty simple. It's not difficult to like, I don't think it's that hard to drive. I think the Mustang is a lot more fun, but with the manual, it's like a little bit more risky when you're racing too. You can, the amount of people I've seen like money shift next to me at the drag strip because they're just trying to bang out every gear super fast. It's crazy. Yeah. Like they'll, blow their car up so there's more risk to it it's definitely like more nerve-wracking for me to go race a manual car instead of a 10 speed but if you want times you want to go fast on a stock like transmission or with the least amount of money possible it's obviously the automatic car like that's gonna go fast so i think they have a a 1200 wheel horsepower manual s550 i think he went like eight nine but like you look at that same 1200 horsepower in an automatic with a th400 that thing's running low eights, high sevens. I mean, look at Parker's car. He makes 1225 to the wheels. He ran a 7.9. Yeah. Yeah. On a TH400. Yeah. So why haven't you gone TH400? I mean, I know you like that stick, right? Yeah, I'm keeping that stick in that car. Yeah. That car is supposed to be a street car. It's full weight, full yeah. interior, besides the carbon fiber, obviously. Yeah. But well, I mean, that's what I'm saying, though. If you know your car is faster on a TH400, why not go with the TH400? Well, that's like the same question as asking me. You know your car would be faster with a twin turbo and a built motor and a TH400, but why don't you do it? Yeah. Because I don't want to. It's just not what I want to do. I want to have a a stick car that I can drive down the street and have fun with and that type of stuff. If I want an all-out race car, I'll do that with the new edge. Yeah. I I could not see myself even putting a TH400 in my Camaro. I would do a built 10-speed, keep it at like 900. That's it. I don't want to push it more than that. Well, street driving would be shitty on a TH400. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, Fuck it's, that. it's not terrible. The only thing is the high stall converter. Like, getting moving, you need, like, 3,000 RPMs yeah, to move yeah, the car. So, it's yeah. like, yeah, it's not terrible. But yeah. it's just like it's just like a priorities thing. I could sell every car I have, put all the money in one car, and just TH400 twin turbo built motor. Yeah. But I don't think it would be, like, as fun. I don't know. Yeah. I think we're we touched Not a lot. Really. Yeah, we got a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's getting hot as shit in here. Yeah, it's only getting hotter. We're fucking cooking, honestly. Guys, thank you for tuning in to Go Hard Podcast. Um, you're probably already following him because you're watching his show. But make sure you follow him if you're not. Toby uh, Vega on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube. What's your YouTube account? Same thing. Okay. And um, is it Toby D. Vega or is it Toby Vega? It's Toby Vega D. Toby Vega D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Check him out. Also, check out uh, Go Hard Podcast, the shorts on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and uh, fuck. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. We got more podcasts coming today. Thank you. Peace.